Oh, oh. Told you. Told you. Told you. That's a big one, dude. Look at that one. Oh, you got one, dude. All right, y'all. Well, I am down here in South Louisiana. Welcome back to Outside the Levees. We actually went this morning and did a little red fishing because this man right here, turn around, Mr. Cole, say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? That's Cole from Cole and Jay, a very good YouTube channel about fishing. This guy just lives, sleeps, breathes, eats fishing. He loves it more so than most people ever will. So go check him out if you're really into fishing. He came down here to catch a redfish. We've already been out there and this is what that was like. All right, y'all, we're trying something a little bit different. I got Cole with me and uh, we got some P-Rogs. And we're gonna try to sneak in on some redfish using these P-Rogs. I know we're crazy. All right, y'all. So we came and got out on this shallow grass flat. This is real shallow water. You can see the grass growing on top. And we put the P-Rogs in. That's cool out there. There's my P-Rog I'm fixing to get in. But this way we can stalk nice and quiet. Get across here and read the water. You could see, you know, it's so calm right now. You could see when fish are waking and moving around. Like that might be a fish right there. So I'm gonna get in, get loaded up, and get to catching. <laughs> He's hooked up. <laughs> that makes me happy. That man drove all the way from Arkansas for that right there. <laughs> How about that? Good for him. I get more joy out of watching this right now than I will get out of catching any of them today. We've been talking. Every time I put out a redfish video, he'll get in touch and he'll be like, man, them redfish are nice. Them redfish are nice. And, you know, kind of made plans to come. He had a baby. That's why I do it right there, folks. Look at that. <laughs> it's so much better in the P-Rog, too. So another species he knew he wanted to get on and something I love to do, which is fishing from the bank like this. We went and dropped the boat off. We came over here to this little canal and we are catching brim, but we're also catching an invasive species called the Rio Grande cichlid. That's right. It was not something that the good Lord put here. It's something that man put here one way or another, but they're fun to catch and we're getting on them. This is a little hot spot right here. Oh, already getting one. Come on. Oh, I got him. A bluey. A bluey. We keeping blueys or you gonna put them back? Um. I don't particularly feel like cleaning a lot of fish. Yeah, I can clean them. I don't think I'm, I'm rather catch the cichlid. Well, keep yeah, that's what we came for. Yeah, keep the cichlid, and then we might keep some bluegills after we secure a couple cichlids. All right. So, yeah. All right, folks, I'm already on the board. All these great mystery fish, and in those three big worms, you definitely hit a wide variety of species. And the bluegills pass the bat, and the bluegills are the big worms, so we'll take anything and everything, but we'll just love to catch the mystery fish. And if we do catch it, we're not. Oh no, he got. He, he broke me off. What you got? One pound test? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Come on. Oh, you little sucker. Come here. Well, Jared's hooked up. Well, he was hooked up. Fish busted him off. Oh, he gone. He took the line through the bobber. All right, let me Jared see. lost his bobber. He's going in to save it. You can't leave your bobbers behind. All right, you there save we go. The okay, I'm alive. Bite it's similar, yeah, pretty similar. Sometimes they'll whack it real hard, but it's pretty similar.
Godfish! Oh gosh, the big guy! Right. <laughs> Dude! What's going on here? Nice! I think I'm fishing a little deep. He couldn't pull it under. There we go, guys. Holy Traveled, uh, smokes. Traveled all the way to South Louisiana, and we're still out here catching some big old bluegills. That's a nice one, dude. That's a hammer, man. Gotcha. Oh, off the pole. Jeez. Off the pole. Come on, cichlid. I know y'all here. Oh. oh Told you. Told you. Oh. Told you. That's a big oh. one, dude. Look at that one. Oh, you got one, dude. Told you they right there. That thing is crazy looking. That's a big one, too. Okay, guys, Jared strikes first. He's got our first Rio Grande cichlid of the day. Dude, that's crazy. We got to get to the weigh-in. We got we got to go. We got to get to the weigh-in <laughs> now. That's bigger than the first <laughs> wheel I caught. Like, that is a chunk. Look That's a big one. Yeah, look at the, the, the bulk on the head there. That thing is awesome. We're going to clean and eat that thing. We're going to have to. I'm excited. We can't put it back. We'll get it's in trouble. Yep. Yeah. We'll go, we'll go to jail. That's right. Hey. Nice. Good job, dude. Ooh. Is that another one? Yeah. Get in there, bro. Get in there, bro. Jared's a cichlid king. Get in there. Get you some was, cichlids. I thought, he was, I, thought he was, I thought he was the redfish king, but he's a cichlid. Get in there, bro. There he is. Oh, <laughs> oh, hey, no wonder I missed him last time. Well, dang. There we go, guys. That is the target species right there. Got him. Got him, got him, I got two of them now. Bro, you gotta stop stinking up the hole catching them little ones. What's, got two. what's up with that? I mean, they're from Texas, dude. It's not very shady in Texas. They live in the Rio Grande, right? Yeah. My man Cole. Ooh. Oh gosh. Came down to get on some redfish, which we did. But this was also on the menu. Look at that thing. What? That is a giant Rio. Wow. Let me get. Let me lip him. He can lip this guy so big. <laughs> I know he's got a few teeth. Watch out! There. He's got teeth. Ah, uh, if you call them teeth, I ain't scared. Yes. Look at that thing. Look yes. at those fins. Look at the collar. Things are yes. mutants. Now, Cole, tell them where they could find you and what do you do on YouTube? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Um, you can also find me out in the river out in the lake, out in the swamp, just about everywhere. We are in central Arkansas and uh, we fish all different kinds of different bodies of water for a different variety of fish. And we post all of our experiences on our channel, Cole and Jay, um, if y'all are into fishing, it's pretty much all we do out there. We also do some snake wrangling if you're into that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's fun and we're living the dream, getting out here and go fishing and catch all these cool fish. And I'm super thankful for Jared to have me out here catching these beautiful little Rio cichlids. Let's get some out. That's the hole right here. That's the cichlid hole right that's there. That's the trophy, yeah. That's the where bluegill the hole's right, right over there. That's right. Bluegill hole, cichlid hole, defunct cichlid hole. This was the OG cichlid hole. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 they turned the light switch off. Still happening right here. And then all the bluegill you could ever want right there. Oh, I got one. Ooh, oh, it's a oh. daddy. Dang it. Come on, Gil. Got him. Oh, there we go. There we oh, go. that's a keeper. There's a chunk. <laughs> There's my a man. Chunk Rio I've been looking for. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Oh, she's gosh. freaking swimming off with mine. Jared's over in the bluegill hole. He was swimming away with it. Okay, this is bigger. Definitely yours. But which mine one, was definitely more aggressive. Which one would y'all rather catch? A big old Rio Grande cichlid or a bluegill? <laughs> I guess it kind of depends on which one tastes better. We know bluegill are good. I think the bluegill tastes just a little bit better. Don't tell me that. <laughs> well, we're going to compare. Don't worry, we will compare. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh, they're hammering oh. it right there. They are fired up. Dude, I mean, sticking it, bro. Drilling it. 
Like dang redfish. They don't like me in the blue yoho. Go back and tell them. Don't don't bite coals. Oh, yeah, do. I told you. Dude, they are drilling it, son. <laughs> uh that's probably Menhaden. Menhaden. There way. you go. Oh, I got me another big day. There you go. Hey. Got you a sickie. I'm out here looking at these schools of bait fish. I kept calling Shed. Listen, if you want to get one mounted, I've got the guy. I'm just saying. You got the guy? We got a guy. <sighs> no shame in your game if you want to get one mounted. Not my PB uh, Rio Grande cichlid. Come on. He's on there just licking it. Oh, another one. Okay, we got something new. We got something new. Okay, so this is a new species for me. This is that's an, stump knocker. A stump knocker. Stump knocker. A uh, spotted sunfish. Orange spotted sunfish is where I was about to say. You guys right? I think it's red spotted. Red spotted sunfish. Yes. This is a new sunfish species for me. This is a native species, and you see they look pretty similar in shape to the cichlid. Yep. Those don't seem to get very big. They don't. But they. Somebody was saying they have like they they have a deceiving amount of meat on them. Like a medium one of those and a large bluegill have the same meat, in other words. Come on. Oh! Not as big as the last one I caught, but still, we can make something work out of that. <laughs> See, he's really big. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the dome on him. It's like a dang camel. He got a five head. <laughs> So Cole had to go get his new GoPro because you know GoPros don't really last. It went out on our last shoot. And while we were there, we got night crawlers, which is kind of something I don't use often. I use the red worms, but they are huge worms. Just big old hammers, and you can get a lot off of them, and they're good for threading a hook. I find the red ones I just kind of wrap, but look at the size of these big old earthworms. Let's see if I could cover them up and get them get them nice and cool. Definitely don't want to overheat your worms. Here we go. Oh, he's got a go. bite. He got oh, one on. That's a Rio. That's a Rio. Oh no. Oh, go in there and get him again. They've been good to us about biting after we miss them. Yeah, right. You get some fire. I think that you get one bite, it kind of gets them in a predatory like oh, feeding oh, frenzy. Oh, 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 oh. oh sending it to the moon. Now, Cole, I will tell you this, he's a big hook setter. He's really into his hook sets. I think I've seen him practicing at the gym, like with like a 20 pound weight, ripping it up like that. Cause he will set a hook like nobody's business on these fish. I think that he got most of my worm, unfortunately. I got a little bit on there, but they've been liking a little extra flavor. That one's been uh, depleted of all of its nutrients. Right. And, and what's the setup we're using here, Cole? This is a 6'6", six, six, medium, one piece ACC crappie sticks. It's kind of more of like a medium light. Yeah. Really like these rods a lot. I've got just a 1,000 size reel with 10 pound yep. braid, and I've got eight pound fluorocarbon leader just because you don't really know what you're gonna hook out here. Mm -hmm. You catch catfish, could catch a redfish, could catch a gar. So I'm right. using eight pound. If I was specifically targeting the reels, I'd probably use four. Mm. But just got it below. Yeah, something else could. Yeah, especially when you're using worms. Everybody I mean, right worms. here, it could be a three pound large mouth, could be a redfish. Or a big freshwater drum. We got shrimp boats, we got rope. We've caught that, we've run the gamut. Yeah. Already. So, yeah, it's got a lightweight. It's still finessey. You can get it out of the rocks if you get snagged up. There's a good chance that we can get him to bite again. I got that fresh worm. Come on, big guy. I'll take it easy on you if you bite again. There he is. There he is. There he is. I thought I saw him swirl out from underneath the rock. Oh no. No. <laughs> Got him? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm just save. trying to do my part and save the swamps. We got a spirit feather along with him too. Look at that. Wow. You gotta keep that. When they disappear to you like that, you gotta keep those you gotta keep those feathers. <laughs> Can't lift this one. He's just a little baby. That's it right there. Oh. Here. Goodness. I'll quit being an idiot. But you could see how cool that would look in someone's aquarium. Absolutely. Yep. Especially like, I kind of want to do it. I kind of want to get it in an aquarium, if, you know. That would be really cool. But, see ya. 
right, uh, I'm gonna try the bluegill hole. Shouldn't take long. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Oh, that gets me excited. <laughs> I don't, oh, they didn't get my worm. Confidence. I know. There he is. There we go. That's a, that's a stud, you can put that in the bucket. Oh, look at the orange on it, boy. Oh. Look at the orange on that one. Beautiful. Okay, size perspective, look at, oh, that's <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Nope, 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 nope. As I stand there, <laughs> Oh, that sucks. I'm broke. All right, y'all, Cole got those cichlids all cleaned up. We went ahead and filleted them because this dish really has, the only way it's gonna work is with filleted fish. It's gonna be a little bit of fried fish with some noodles and some good Asian sauce. You can get at the grocery, super easy to get. So let's get right into it. All right, let's drop them in the egg wash, all of them, since they're not super big. And we don't have a ton of them. We'll just put them all in now. There we go. And coat them in egg wash. All right. And just let them sit there a minute while your oil comes up to temp. All right, and then go ahead. Once they've coated in egg wash, start running them through your breadcrumbs. Like so, that's what you're looking for. And once they're coated, I just go ahead and drop them in. I always fry at 375. You want your fish to get in and out. Don't let them sit in that oil for too long. Just get in there, get cooked and get them out. These are small fillets. They're not gonna take long at all. All right, once they get crispy golden, like so, they are done. Let them cool off a little bit. All right, and then at this point, I like to go ahead and just slice them a little bit, like so. Just like that. All right, and then the kicker to this dish is gonna be the Japanese barbecue sauce by, I'm not gonna, I know I'm gonna butcher that, but Bakans or Bashans. Um, we were able to get this at Walmart. I've been seeing their ads for a long time. It's very good. It's like almost like soy sauce and barbecue sauce put together. So get your noodles, drop your fish in like so. Then we're going to go ahead and put that barbecue sauce on it. Whoo! starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna put a little bit more. And then I will just take and top that with a little bit of sesame seeds. That's it. From somebody's aquarium to the bayous of Louisiana into my bowl. That's what I'm eating, y'all. All right, folks, look at that. Look at that. Let's try it out. Mmm. That sauce is what's up. Y'all have to go try that. And if you don't have access to the cichlids like we caught, definitely do this with bluegill bass, whatever it is that you like. Very good. Mm. So once again, shout out to Cole from Cole and Jay. Go check out his channel. If you like what we do here and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Can't do it without y'all. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.